So, hello and welcome again. Elias here from the team Red Bull Drift Brothers. And today we wanted to take you along where we do a quick technical debrief of our first competition in Grimbach. So, I have Robbie from Track Day Performance with me. He's in Ireland and uh, he was with us at the first event there and we had quite a lot to do there and today we want to see how data was able to help us to improve our performance on track. So welcome Robbie. thanks for, for taking the time. Hi Ali, um, good to see you. It's good to have a chat afterwards when everybody's had a bit of time to decompile the information and think about it in a more uh, analytical way, possibly maybe without emotion connected to it, because it's a few days afterwards, the adrenaline rush is gone and you're a bit clearer in your head. So it's always good to do that. Really speaking, I suppose what we need to tell the viewers is that we started off probably Friday morning with two cars that had done a rollout shoot and had done some um, show runs at the F1, uh, which, and they did them well, but uh, as all true competition drivers know, there is no real thing for testing like an event. You can go and you can drive at the F1 side by side and you can think you're doing very well, but you've no gauge of what the competition is at, no gauge how they improved since last season, or sorry, should I say really two seasons ago, with the COVID break we had and all of this had to be yeah taken into account for two new cars it's not as if we're rolling out two cars we knew what we were doing with so roll on Friday morning and we have two drivers who have had minimal seat time in two vehicles that we don't know exactly everything about yet and it was a job to start observing from many different aspects uh, how the vehicles and the drivers were performing so that we could try and aid you and Joe to get the most out of what was available at the time. So how do you feel Friday was when you got in the car? What did it feel like? Oh, Friday was <laughs> a real bummer for me. It was, it was drivable. Uh, it was uh, doing okay. All systems were working. However, the entire grip and also like being able to, to drive the car on its limits, it was just not there. Like the feeling was not there. The grip was not there. Also the, the understanding and, and some things on, on the engine, like um, it, was, it was just feeling, let's say, a bit laggy. And I was just not feeling confident with driving it on its limit. Having spoken obviously to you and your brother in depth all the time at the event, I think he shared probably quite similar sentiments, maybe a bit more on the engine performance. And it wasn't that the engine had no power, it was that he didn't know or wasn't extracting the power out of the engine in a way he understood because he is still very much, I think, driving a normally aspirated car by reflex. Obviously, he knows that it's a turbo car, quite aware of it, but when you get into the competition environment, you put on the suit, you put on the helmet, um, all the previous things you have done in the past come back into your subconscious and start helping you to drive the car, but in this case, they weren't helping. So I suppose we need to also tell the viewers, like we, we designed suspension systems from absolute scratch for these cars. We had really no data to use from a similar vehicle or anything. Everything was quite a bit different and there was a lot of gambles taken and we were all probably hoping that this was going to work when it came to it. But we just set to work, um, I suppose, in a very analytical way. I tried to listen to the drivers and then I started to look at the data we were compiling. Um, we were data logging every run in every aspect. So we had a lot of data logging coming off the engine and I was looking at that just really to check that first of all the engines were healthy and that they were okay because this was probably the hottest event I think Friday was wasn't Friday the day that was trying to kill us with the heat I think Friday was the hottest until the rain. yeah until the rain came yeah <laughs> looking at that from an engineering point of view just to make sure that we don't damage anything because uh, the engines were developed in Ireland during the winter so there was a bit of a temperature difference there so we looked at that but then also started to notice things about the usage of the throttle uh, by the drivers um, and how we could improve the response of the engines. Some of that won't actually be totally apparent until Sunday really because it took us a good bit more time to really get into depth of that. But we started making improvements right away and the drivers kept telling us it was a slight bit better or a bit better or this was better. But we also made some suspension changes um, which didn't improve the situation, but maybe that was a good thing. Um, we tried some different ride heights um, and it had a drastic effect. A couple of aspects of the vehicle, so that made the vehicle, which up to this point had been an awful lot more stable in the roll axis than the old cars, um, even with quite soft springs, uh, it made it want to roll quite a bit. And 
that would match what we knew about the design, but uh, we needed to kind of push some limits quickly to know that we're going in the wrong direction or the right direction, because if you keep making really, really subtle changes, um, we'd need five or six events to get the cars dialed in. We only had a few practice runs. So uh, it was probably a good thing, but a bad thing. The drivers lost a tiny bit of confidence with the cars, but uh, we knew which direction we definitely shouldn't go. And the data also indicated that it was a disastrous move. So from there, we um, well, then we ran into a bit of a godsend, I suppose. In one way, we had this massive uh, hail st- shower, which oh, yes, delayed uh, practice till Saturday morning, which was pretty good because it gave us an extra window of time to put the cars back to the previous settings and a bit more the opposite direction. So I suppose the next thing that was a big issue really was just purely the lack of track time because the hail came and it caused chaos flooding, everything, then the track basically was open for practice, uh, qualifying had been moved, track was open for practice, but the track conditions were wet, greasy, patchy, so then I don't know, how, I can't even remember how many runs we got, but they weren't really m- much good, were they, because no. the grip was changing every time you went out, you couldn't know if it was the car or the setup. Yeah, so it was, if I'm not mistaken, one lap for me and two laps for Joe in these conditions, and mine was terrible, I was like, really all over the place but not on the on the ideal line i was also yeah the question that you just said was in my head was it the car was it me was it the conditions uh, but i guess it was at least quite a good bit the conditions because always when it starts raining as you said different con- uh, conditions on the road and there hadn't been many cars going out and, and cleaning the track it was just great disaster for me at least uh, feeling in the car or sitting in the car yeah so then that knocked everybody's confidence that knocked the team's confidence knocked my confidence and then knocked the driver's confidence so it was a pretty bad situation but we did have one thing still in our favor is we had the night we had the night the guys could have a rest they could get up fresh the next day they didn't have to try and deal with all that psychologically in their head they could wake up the new day and just start off going okay we're going to have a new day again so for saturday um i think really we can really start talking about progress from saturday because from saturday we actually started making progress friday we learned what we shouldn't do i suppose and what the weather shouldn't do to us uh, when we're meant to be in a nice hot country in the summer but so Saturday, um, we had a couple of laps of practice in the morning, but at least it was dry. How did you feel the car handled on Saturday morning? On Saturday morning, it was way better. Um, I felt way more confident. Um, so I basically, I was, in, 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 in other words, I was already speaking the same language than the, the car did. So when I did an input, the reaction came that I expected it to, to do. Um, so this was basically a whole whole different game then. Yeah, well, we could see like, and we could see that, and everybody like on Friday, people were coming around to me who know me and know the team and saying, "What's wrong with the guys? What's wrong with the cars? Is there something wrong?" And I just had to say, "No, it's not. It's a brand new car." And you don't remember the first time you were in your brand new car. It probably wasn't so good either. So you know, um, you have to just not let that get in on you and don't even listen to it to be honest and I just kind of joked with them and I said wait till you see Sunday I'm sure there'll be a difference um so we started working towards that obviously so on Saturday then every run we got we made an improvement we already had some pretty logical data coming in and we were monitoring all sorts of chassis uh, items as many as possible because uh, Driftmasters prohibits the use of wheel speeds um, which is kind of a pity for data logging but the, it's it, it's so that people don't use um, launch control and other methods to drag race off the line so I'm totally with it but um, uh, for setting up these cars it would have been a help so all we were able to do was use our GPS speed and we were able to use the calculated or estimated wheel speed from the engine RPM and the gear ratio and it's pretty accurate to be honest as long as the clutch not slipping it's pretty damn accurate but you just don't can't see what the front wheels exactly are doing you can't see if you're having an individual wheel lock up on the front under left foot braking and a lot of other things you can't really see so you're still guessing them to see if you got the front end of the car right but at no real time um, did I have the drivers majorly moaning about understeer which was good it was just not enough grip not enough grip and one of the things I suppose everybody may or may not know is that these cars are probably 15 20 percent bigger than everything else in the grid physically yep. it, they definitely look bigger <laughs> um, and um, they're probably also carrying we're not going to divulge the weight figures but they probably are carrying that extra bit of weight as well so we're at a big weight disadvantage and we've got the same footprint tire in fact most of the grid were on 285s we were using 2865s at the time because that's what we had available and we use what we have and get the best out of it that's always what happens so saturday morning practice and then we had qualifying 
which didn't turn out amazing for Ellie on Saturday. Unfort a bit better. Yeah, unfortunately, I had a small mistake in the first lap, but I was feeling quite confident that I can do it better in the in the second lap. Uh, it was first lap was already on the initiation. I just carried too much speed in, into the first turn because we made further improvements. And all of a sudden, I was able to just carry more speed into the turn, but I was over the limit of what the, the tire could do. So for the second uh, qualification lap, we put on better tires. Um, I carried more speed in and it worked out quite well all along the, the first turn until the first braking zone. And I got the note from Joe, hey, it is somewhat slippery in that braking zone, so break earlier. I did so, but it seemed like I was still not braking early enough so I went off track with uh, two wheels the second wheel was just about two centimeters in the dirt but this was a zero for me then and unfortunately then I was out of competition however Joe qualified um, quite okay and so we had one car in competition and this for the first time that we've been with the new cars at a competition I think it's already a win for us yeah and all the time that even your two runs where you didn't qualify, you got very valuable data for the teams. And one thing, of course, that we have massive advantage this time is that either car can get us valuable data because the two cars are built identically, where before we had two completely different chassis, which was a nightmare because you couldn't compare much between them. So it was, yeah, it was good. So even though poor Ellie didn't get a really successful Saturday qualifying, he still managed to get valuable data, which helped for Sunday. And this will show on Sunday so in a minute I'm going to show you some data but we'll just finish our Saturday roundup really because that's basically the next thing that happened on Saturday was Joe uh, was thrown against Peter Vincek for his battle yeah now Peter will probably know this but Peter won the event uh, on Saturday Sunday as well <laughs> and uh, anybody who's actually watched this will realize that his car is an absolute rocket ship two reasons probably one is it's the car he always drives very similar car it, I think it's a slightly new version but it's a carbon copy of his FD setup so he's comfortable in it he knows it he knows exactly what it will do under all these different conditions and also he has some pretty serious tires his tires seem to be yeah really good I'm not going to make excuses for anything whatsoever However, but his tires are good and as you'll see later Ellie was able to show that he can keep up with some of the other bests uh, on the grid but uh, we had nothing for Peter in speed and I don't think any of the other competition through the whole weekend had anybody anybody I don't think could match his uh, pace uh, on the first corner or anywhere really on track he just showed that he was in a league of his own totally so Joe had a run against him and yeah he tried his best um, it wasn't a bad run from Joe he drove quite well um, I think he put in probably that would have been the best lap he put in since he started driving the car I would think um, against Peter because he knew what, how high the stakes were and he was neat and tidy and um, it wasn't enough because Peter was just left him for dead on the first uh, when he was leading and then just stayed a sensible dif distance behind Joe because he knew that he had such an advantage there was no point being on the door Joe's in a new car and understandably he was a bit nervous that maybe Joe would have you know a bit of a wobble or something and he did come to us afterwards and say that I didn't want to damage your new car which was pretty nice because you know um, he could have rubbed the wheel off our car to show just how good he is because he's well capable of that and maybe done a bit of damage uh, and he decided not to do that to take the win or he you know the danger is he does that and then we have a little bit of a whoopsie and his car gets damaged and it puts him out of competition for the rest of the day so he was driving with his head definitely but then we had two more laps of good data and then on saturday night we set about uh, sunday and there was a lot of work to do unfortunately we had to put a clutch into joe's car he was starting to get heavy clutch drag and struggling to change gear Ellie's clutch was fine so we did uh, a lot of suspension changes this time we were only moving things uh, a small amounts at a time because we got close to the sweet spot I felt already on Saturday just getting there going into Sunday this is where we'll actually show some data now in a sec going into Sunday uh, we had um, the two cars up for morning practice and we had a bit of a disaster Joe came off the line in practice first second third gear uh, I think even third gear the clutch started slipping but when he went put it into fourth he literally lost all drive the clutch completely failed brand new clutch failed now there's a reason several reasons the clutch failed one was probably these clutches could do with some amount of run-in time and we haven't got any choice we had to put a new one in on Saturday night so it didn't get any run-in time we were shoving upwards of a thousand to eleven hundred newton meters through it in its first ever time being used and it decided that the surfaces were just too clean and polished and they basically slipped once they slipped they generated a bit of heat and that was it so joe's car was back into the pits and the tech team had a really 
difficult task of getting a clutch that would work in that car before qualifying, which started. I think qualifying was nearly starting by the time we got the car back into the paddock. So Ellie went out and he did some practice, gained some more valuable data and was able to validate that the settings we'd made to both cars were yet again another improvement. We're getting higher speed on the big corner. He was finding it easier to get the car through the rest of the course, I think. Um, and it was just an improvement. So that gave us some confidence that we needed to push on hard with Joe's car, get him out there, get some both guys qualified. Yeah, so luckily um, Joe got his clutch just for a second qualification lap done. Uh, the team did an awesome job there. And I had my first quali lap. Um, this was okay. If I'm not mistaken, I, I just have to, to remember back. <laughs> um, second was better. However, I did understeer at the initiation. So there was, unfortunately, there was an oil leak in the normal um, lane where we normally do our qualification lap through the chicane. So they changed uh, the run up for the second qualification lap. So we didn't have a chicane. And so I was just thrown a bit off on the initiation. Uh, I initiated too early and then I Catch, caught some some small understeer but it was a driver's error uh, to be honest uh, just not being as experienced as in my old car it wouldn't have been any issue I would I, I think uh, but yeah I was a bit worried or a bit sad about doing the the, the mistake right at the beginning because the rest of the lap I think was probably around uh, 70 maybe maybe even uh, in the 80 points round but with this understeer it was just yeah, almost no points what is understandable uh, on that level so however I just managed to qualify on the 32nd place. Uh, Joe was quite good in the midfield. He qualified uh, 16th, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. 19th. 19th, okay. We both were in a competition and had battles ahead of us. And now I think it's time that we look into some data. Yeah, so here is the grind back track. Uh, the red line is the actual drift track that's uh, required to be run and it's not a bad line through it actually on this um, this run here and this run here basically is uh, one of Ellie's good runs on Saturday. There's a few mistakes in it but still we, we, we're, we're showing this run to show progression and to show how that we were able to use the systems at our disposal uh, to improve the car and we're not doing massive tech deep dive on this. We can do a tech deep dive on data logging and all that but this is just to show that we were making progress with the car. So I'll switch to a different screen. So I'm going to show you basically what I'm going to show you now is Ellie's best run on Saturday versus Ellie's following run of Connor Shanahan who by the way was second place in Saturday's competition. So at this is Sunday. We're, we're on Sunday now but on Saturday, Connor was second. So Ellie was battling Connor for top 32 on Sunday. And I'm going to show you some differences in a few things. So this is a rainbow track. This is the track the cars drive between the initiation point and the finish line. Um, and the different colors are the throttle application. So orange to red is full throttle and blue is no throttle. Now, as you'll see, there is patchiness in the big turn on the throttle here where the driver feels they either don't have the grip or don't have the setup to continually power it through uh, or the confidence, you know, because we, we're learning the cars too. So that is uh, the best run that I picked out of Saturday. Now, I could pick out the worst to make this look even more awesome how we achieve things, but we're not trying to do that. We're just trying to say we're getting somewhere. Uh, we're not trying to say we're awesome by any means. We're getting there. But... If we compare that, if you just watch where the orange is compared to when Ellie was following, following Connor Shanahan. So this is when Ellie is following Connor Shanahan on Sunday. So already there's a significant amount more um, throttle usage and smoother throttle usage. In other words, he doesn't have to shut down as much. But then in Ellie's run where he's leaving Connor Shanahan, there's even more throttle usage, which is really interesting because uh, it actually proves that he had to slow a tiny bit to be behind Connor in certain parts of the track. And Connor was good enough to be second on Saturday, so that gave me a bit of confidence that Ellie wasn't totally left behind. With certain parts of the track, he struggled to keep up with Connor because Connor's car is a bit more agile and nimble and we need to find the setup there. But if we look at this data again, so if I go back here and I look at a different version of the data, so this is the speed. This is basically the speed versus the throttle inputs um, for the run. So if we pick out the peak speed uh, on the big corner here, for uh, Ellie's best run on Saturday. He did uh, 119.6 kilometers per hour um, here at the curb, which is not bad. And 
on his chase run of Connor Shanahan. If we go to the same place, the peak peak speed in that corner again, it's uh, 119.3. So it's very, very similar when he's following Connor to what he was able to do the previous day. But uh, the interesting thing is when he was on his own in his lead position, which he didn't do a bad lead lap, he was able to get a whopping 128 kilometers, wow. an hour, 10 kilometers an hour more when he was leading Connor, which is pretty good. Um, we thought going into this battle after seeing Joe against Peter the day before that this was possibly just a whitewash. We were going to get left behind. Everybody was a bit damn. Connor was second the other day. We're 32nd or whatever. It's going to be a big difference. But this this particular set of runs, Ellie drove really, really well. And it gave the team massive confidence because it showed that the cars had the pace. Um, Ellie was running, I think, a different tyre combo at this stage. So instantly we knew for Joe's next run what we should do to the car because all the settings we put on Ellie, certainly they were working. They were definitely better than Saturday's. And they're going in the right direction. So one of the other things we looked at was uh, the sideways G, because obviously drifting is about going sideways as you can without falling off the track. <laughs> to go sideways without falling off the track, you must have some uh, grip in the sideways part of the drift. And that's called side bite. Drifters call that side bite. Um, and basically, we have what's called a G ball, which is basically a scatter plot of the longitude and the lateral G. And I use this little thing a lot. This tells me whether I've made any improvement to the side by the car. So here we are looking at Saturday. The best G we got on average was about 0.9 consistently and a few little touches over 1G. Um, in Ellie's run chasing Connor, it was quite a similar situation. It was around 0 0.95, 0 0.995 and a few touches over 1. But then when you see Ellie's run out on his own, he had quite a few hits, well over 1G, with some peaks up in the 1.2, 1.3G range. So that made us know that when the car needed to have some side bite, it did have some side bite. And you have to remember that these drivers are learning the cars all the time. Every lap they get in the cars, they are improving as well as the vehicle. So this is not all the vehicle, but it's just proving the vehicle can do it. And once you prove to the driver that the vehicle can do the job, the driver will always have more confidence and more confidence allows the driver to drive better. So like this is just one of the very small amounts of data that we gather from the cars all the time. Obviously, we gather all other stuff. We gather the pressures, temperatures, the cooling info. Um, and just one thing we're very proud of and well done to Ellie for designing it with the cooling system because these cars were coming back in off the track at about 90 degrees, 95 degrees water temperature, which we never would have seen on such a hot day with the old cars. And I think a lot of the other competition, we would see them in the pre-start area with water coolers and spray and all sorts of things to cool their cars down. So the cars are cooling well. Um, and that's a real advantage that we're not starting the next battle hot. Really now what we could do is having seen that data, is to have a quick look at the actual runs, if that's okay, guys. Would you like to see them? Yep. Okay, so here we have, we're just, just focusing on Ellie versus Connor here, just because this gives a gauge that we have reached a level where we are slightly competitive, not totally, but slightly. So we'll run this from the start. Yeah, so actually the car could have done more there. I was really surprised how close I could stay with Connor. Um, in the braking zone, I, I was so surprised that I actually uh, yeah, didn't get the, the right braking point, but I could make up a bit. <coughs> and this is the area, Robbie, you told before, where Connor went away a bit, uh, this acceleration uh, area. But yeah, I definitely hadn't used all the potential of the car. But yeah, as we can see, this was at least a, a battle, I would say, not a, not a wipeout. To also tell our, our viewers, um, all this data has been gathered with uh, MoTeC gear. They are our official supplier. So we have the ECU, the MoTeC M142. We have the expander module, the E888. And we have the PDM30 uh, in the car, as well as the C1212 dash. And um, yeah, with all these parts together, we basically can gather all the data from all the systems. Might they be electric, might they be mechanical and so on and so on. And that allows us to do these analysis and also improve over a, just a three day event um, from being 
more or less nowhere on Friday to be somewhat competitive on Sunday. Um, this is quite amazing for me and I wasn't expecting it. I was expecting us to go in the right direction and to make steps, but not that huge. Like me being in the car, as I said before, I was so surprised that I was expecting uh, that a wheel goes off Connor's car or the engine explodes or something is wrong with him because staying that close all the entire first, first turn I wasn't expecting that we make that big of a difference from Friday to Sunday, but we actually did. And it's yeah, down to getting the data, analyzing the data and having the experience to, to read it and to make the, the right changes. And that's what yeah, I'm really proud of the team uh, on, of Robbie. And yeah, that's why we, we improved that much. Yeah, well, as thank you very much for the uh, compliment there. It, it wasn't all me, it was the data telling me roughly what to do and I had to use. The few times the data told me what we, what direction we needed to go, how far to go, yes, is down to experience. But I knew that time was against us, so we had to use a few gut decisions as well. So they played off in the end, they could have gone horribly wrong. If you guys trust me, I've done it a few times before when things were on the line and there was nothing really on the line now. So it was probably a better time than ever to take a drastic step and, and try. Because if, if it works, you gain so much. If it loses, you just gain it. You lose a position. It's good. But yeah, we couldn't do it without the data. Um, having Motec as a full technical partner, obviously I'm a Motec dealer. And I use Motec all the time. So I can't uh, praise them highly enough for a lot of that stuff. But, you know, to have all the systems on these cars it's, it's it's the icing on the cake because i'll be honest without it we would have been yeah we would have been scratching around in the dirt for quite a while because so when there's so many new things um put in front of you we could have blamed many many different things for why we weren't getting the performance but by being able to absolutely just pinpoint them by having just raw figures graphs uh pressure charts, all this in front of you, you can just go, no, there's the problem. We'll analyze that particular problem, fix that, do one thing at a time, or do one set of things at a time, see how it works. And it just led us totally in the right direction. So I, I'm yeah, really happy to have all of that at our disposal. And it's like a major asset to the team to have it at their disposal as well. Thank you very much. And now we're already in preparation for Riga, the next event coming up, um, Drift Masters round three and four. Yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to see also the comparison of our old cars to our new cars, because there we also have enough uh, data from, from the past events. Um, and we are really looking forward to that. So yeah, if you're free on that weekend, uh, join in. Um, it will be broadcast again on Red Bull TV. And it's, yeah, always, always exciting, I would say. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Riga is going to be fun. Very, very fast track. Um, may definitely be a bit more friendly to the big cars than uh, Grindback, which is more of a karting track. So, yeah, I think we will get some. If we can have the same improvement in Riga from Friday to Sunday, we'll go to the last round in uh, Georgia. Very, very happy people, I think. Definitely. So thanks again, Robbie. Thank you for watching and stay tuned. We will continue with all this and probably do another one uh, with, with Joe's data. Okay. Okay. Thanks, guys. Yep. Thank you. Bye bye.